Yeah, it's about time to clean up the junk, y'all. Mm-hmm. That's right. We've been having some issues around here, and I think that we know they come from. We got a problem. We're not sitting here and talking about it today. I thought I'd get this in the mood of, you know, just how things run around here, like Sanford and things. You know, that's kind of how I see things. So we're going to get on down a little retro and more history lessons, and I thought this would be an appropriate intro. Well, good evening, and welcome to the 8 March edition of the Alan Osborne Show. I'm here with your sheriff's image behind me there. Mikey, close your mouth. You're catching flies again. Anyway, my last show... The history part of it was very interesting, so I thought I'd share some more real news with you. Now, I gave you a history of how the sheriff and most of the BCC, and also remember, uh, let's see here, remember this guy getting fired and this guy getting hired. Now, he didn't work under Quinn, not to my knowledge, but all the rest of these guys, and, and Mikey knows it. But here's... I want to talk about Mike Atkins because he's told people I've made all these wild, unfounded things. So, Mike, let's break down you versus me, okay? So, Mikey Atkinson is a Defuniac son, okay? And he went, as I understand, he went to FSU to be in law enforcement, but he had some issues with passing standards. I'm not exactly sure what those were, but I can guess if you look at him or saw what he looked like, when he came back to here. But anyway, the grand Mike puts on, I've never seen such a showboat image of a sheriff's department that came from somebody who was a corporal, basically, in the corrections. And you can correct us if we're wrong, Mikey. You were corporal in the state correction system when you became the city marshal of Defuniac Springs or the chief of police, whatever you want to call it. So look, before 2008 and early 2000, Mikey's living in Tallahassee. He got nothing to do with his county. But his big uncle and his cousin Clay and all them are calling a lot of shots. And we had a sheriff called Ralph Johnson. Ralph Johnson was actually going to investigate some people because he wasn't really connected to anybody. And it made people like Mikey's family nervous and a lot of people around Defuniac wanted the good old boy system to stay in place so we're going to talk about what actually happened so Ralph had beat the old Quinn McMillan from the last history lesson if you remember and so they had to do something so they couldn't just run Mike for sheriff straight out of Tallahassee but he was somebody that Uncle Clayton and the, and the cabal of the good old boys could tell what to do because fat boy wanted a job so he's in Tallahassee and wants to come back so they gather all up their money and they make him he runs for city marshal basically not even living here and moves back and becomes the Funiac. so in 2008 the great conspiracy to put Ralph out of office before he caught somebody had to be put on so I'm going to tell you exactly how Mike Atkinson everybody says he's wildly popular and can't be defeated. So in 2008, Mike Atkinson, and you can go to the supervisors of elections and look out the 2008 primary results. Mike Atkinson, seven people ran for the primary against Ralph Johnson. And in this, if you're a Democrat watching in this county, except in the general election, your vote don't mean much because a Republican is going to win. They knew if Fat Boy won the primary, that he would be the sheriff. And so it became. So I want to tell you something, Mike, you've talked a lot of crap about me, but I ran in that same election too and learned a lot of lessons. So here's the primary results. Mike Atkinson has never had another candidate except in the general election. I believe Danny ran against him, not Gladwell. But he had a Democrat opponent in one of the elections. But here's the actual numbers in this county. You know how many people actually made Mike Atkinson because nobody used to show up to primaries. I mean, I don't think even six, maybe about 6,000 people voted. But Mike Atkinson in the 2008 primary that made him sheriff got 2,733 votes. 
hell, Mike, I got 2,367. How can you be righteous thinking everybody believes you? A lot of people believed me and what I was saying, and I'm still saying it now. There's a corruption problem. Remember that, Mike, when I tell you that? And you Remember you used to call me at night? This man used to call me, and we can sit him down for deposition if he wants to deny it. But that's what put Mike Atkinson in office, and nobody's really run against him, and nobody's questioned him. And this is where the buck has stopped, period, on corruption and holding people responsible and what laws are going to be enforced in Walton County. Take that in. I think, look, or we over 60,000 people, $20 billion in real estate, and all our laws are riding on a 2008 primary where 2,733 people put this up to a general election. And Mike was dividing the boat, and so were all the people supporting him. And you know who was heavily involved in that election? This man right here, his buddy, who he wrote, rewrote the job to do the jail despite having been 10 years out of corrections. Mike rewrote a job qualification because this guy didn't qualify for it. That's right. You know who else ran against old Mikey? Tony Corman. That's right. That's who the interim administrator is. So you have this mass cabal of cops, and I'm sorry. This guy, if you saw Mike, go look at the oil spill pictures of him. Frankly, Mike could not pass standards of a cop or a military in my physical standards. Go look at him. When I was in the military, our commanders and leaders had to meet the same standards that we did established by the Army and the Department of Defense. This guy doesn't have to meet any standard. Like I said, this is a big smoke screen. He's got about 60 million or 60 percent of the vote of the budget or better in this county for a guy whose job prior to being elected was not really a cop. He's a prison guard. Isn't that right, Mike? You were working in corrections. You weren't a cop. So this was all just to keep us from having a real sheriff. And if you don't think this can happen and you're not from the area, look up Charlie Morris in the next county who got caught with $78,000. Now, Mike, he's smarter than that, but he's got some nice little LLCs out there on Florida Sunbiz. And you go ask him if this is true. So after he got in office and I reported this to Mikey, he did nothing. Mikey, I'm going to be turning in a public records request because if you did do an investigation, like you said, and nothing came of it, it's closed and old enough beyond the statute of limitations. I'll be requesting copies of it. So, you know, we're going to find out exactly what you did, Mike, but what Mike's best at is keeping the information inside of Walton County, and he has a buddy named Greg Anchors that he works closely with the state attorney. So basically, this guy has no intent of working on the half a billion dollar fraud. You know why? Well, one of the reasons is, I already admitted, this is our intern county attorney. If you go back to the meetings where he was hired, You'll see him say he had a conflict with Sandestin. Well, Sandestin is at the center of the half a billion dollar fraud. And that's this guy's cousin. It was this guy's daddy who helped Mike fight the system to get a job in Tallahassee because he probably wasn't qualified. Isn't that right, Mike? But this is, I really want to get down to this. 2,700 people and 33, I don't want to miss one, Mike. 2,733 people put you up in a 60,000 county to be sheriff and nobody has questioned you and we should because according to this guy, they've done nothing wrong ever. Do you know anybody like that? The only guy that I ever knew that didn't do anything wrong, they nailed him to a cross on a piece of wood. And this is not that man. This is a corporal from the, and he's a politician. He's not a cop. And he's not here to hold anybody responsible. And these cops that trained before Mike ever did, they never had a leader that showed them what accountability and standards were. They had Quinn. And when Ralph came in, and not that Ralph was perfect, I get it, fellas. Ralph, you're a little ornery. But when Ralph started questioning how the good old boys did, they rallied. 
they rallied and there was nobody here that locally could win hell tony corman i don't think he got 600 votes but they knew they could push this guy and he has the gift of gab you ever seen well, how you doing welcome to walton county and here's my 10th cup of coffee and don't y'all look pretty look anybody can do that but the fact of the matter is i don't think mike's have you seen the growth in Walton County? We're number one in the nation, according to Mike. I don't think Mike's ever arrested a legal immigrant here because illegal doesn't mean anything if it's what they want. If it's what the insiders want and those rules don't fit, well, Mike and this guy and this guy and these guys have been making that happen and a bunch of other you people, I could put your pictures up here, her, if I got a picture of Cecilia and some of the past people, but that's what the problem has been around here. And this guy right here on the kazoo, he was all in that election too. So these people, and look at the complaint I posted. Folks, we have a problem, but I want you to know what the facts are. When I tried to ask Mike to enforce the law, him and Graham Fountain, Graham Fountain is a massive fat man who said he was had health issues and quit being a county commissioner, but then became a full-time employee for a developer. And also then came up, that's what he's doing now, and he also went to a full-time job at the Defuniac State Attorney's Office, working for who else? Up there with Greg Anchors, making sure that Mikey was covered down because Graham was in on that. And Graham watches my show under the name Tessie Fountain, I believe, as a fan. So hi, Graham. Graham is a disgusting man with a big mouth and a gut three times the size of his mouth. He's a useless individual, in my opinion, a political pawn who grew up in politics just like this man. And it's time that we had some accountability in Walton County because all the rules are breaking. There's polluting our bay. It's overcrowding our roads. It's taking everything away from the children that are born here and the quality of life they have. And it, it's done for people like this, because they want control of this county. And they think you're too stupid to realize how connected they all are. But I wanna announce some good news tonight and just not be a pessimist. Hey, Trey, Trey Nick, who's gonna run for Miramar, who's never lived there. I heard that uh, Donna Johns has prequaled for the Miramar district. Congratulations, people. I believe Donna to be a sincere person who's done an outstanding job as commissioner in the Mesquita and done everything she promised, unlike most. And I think this is going to be awesome. So it's time to get out and change the cabal. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. And I'm telling you, these people behind me, him, 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 these are all the same person, just a pile of good old boys who are willing to do this and look the other way. They're willing to fire people who weren't involved, take vacations with grand pianos and give jobs to their friends and family and undeserving promotions to other people. I'm telling you, this has got to stop. And I'm Alan Osborne on the Alan Osborne Show. Stay tuned to me for more common sense about history. You can't change history and you can't change DNA, but we don't have to elect it anymore. It's time for a change because this guy has never has basically run unopposed since 2,733 people put him in first place in a primary election where a Democrat could not win. Something to think about, the truth in numbers, on the Alan Osborne Show. Mikey, I'm ha quite happy to come debate you and your army of PIO, and bring all your lieutenants and everything. I'll show them the papers where you wrote on me. And guess what? Here's the leather. When Mikey was getting his legal advice, he was getting it from Matthews and Hawkins about suing me. And Matthews and Hawkins, ha it was Matthews, Jones and Hawkins at the time. They were representing the developer of Sandestin on this. They were also advising Mikey. So the same lawyer was telling him it was okay to come after me and ignore me while Mikey and the then BCC and this BC continue to ignore 
the stormwater failures and traffic failures and the lies of county staff who have not been held accountable. And to the county staff out there that don't do these things, we know who you are. We know a lot of you are trying your best and you've had sorry leadership for years. But it's election time. It's time for a change. Get involved and run. Alan, why don't you run? I did. I didn't work, so I'm doing this. Y'all join me out there in Alan Osborne land. I'll see you soon. It's 8 March 22.